This is the movie actor, Jeffrey Hunter. His real name is Henry Herman McKinnis Jr. His nickname was Hank. Hank was born November the 25th, 1926, in New Orleans, Louisiana. He was the only child of Henry McKinnis Sr. and Edith Burgess McKinnis. His parents met while he was attending the University of Arkansas. When Hank was three, his family moved to Milwaukee, Wisconsin. Mr. McKinnis worked as a sales engineer, and the family will eventually buy this house located at 2957 North Larkin Street, Whitefish Bay, Wisconsin, a suburb of Milwaukee. Hank will attend Whitefish Bay High School. He'll become a co-captain of the football team and president of the senior class. From an early age, he wanted to be an actor. And in his teens, he performed with the North Shore Children's Theater. He also got involved in summer stock all through high school. During his senior year, he'll earn his first paycheck from radio station WTMJ for a wartime series entitled Those Who Serve. After graduating high school, Hank will enlist in the Navy. He'll be trained at the Great Lakes Naval Station in Illinois. As he was preparing to be shipped to Japan, he became very ill and was unable to go. And on 26 May 1946, he was released from service. After being discharged from the Navy, he'll enter Northwestern University at Evingston, Illinois. While at Northwest, Hank will continue performing in summer stock where he met David Bradley, who will later direct and produce the movie Julius Caesar. In 1949, McKinnis will graduate from Northwestern with a bachelor's degree. He will then move to Los Angeles and do graduate work at UCLA. While performing at UCLA in a school play, All My Sons, in May of 1950, he'll be spotted by scouts from Paramount and 20th Century Fox, both offer him a screen test. Hank tested with Paramount, but the studio was having an executive shakeup, which delayed his being hired. But while there, he meets actress Barbara Rush, They'll begin seeing a lot of each other. Even though Barbara was under contract to Paramount, Hank will go to 20th Century Fox when Daryl F. Sinek will offer him a contract on June 1, 1950 that will last for nine years. Zanuck was the person that suggested that Hank change his name to Jeffrey Hunter. Jeffrey would be offered a small, unaccredited part in Julius Caesar that starred Charlton Heston and directed by David Bradley, whom he had met while he was attending UCLA. On the 1st of December, 1950, Barbara Rush left her filming location in Arizona and met Jeffrey Hunter in Boulder City, Nevada, where they were married. Soon after their marriage, Jeffrey was sent to New York along with Richard Bayhart and Grace Kelly to film 14 hours. The next year in 1952, Jeffrey will, for the first time, get star billing in Red Skies of Montana with Richard Widmark. Also on the 29th of August, that same year, Barbara Rush and Jeffrey Hunter will have a son. They'll name him Christopher. The next year, in 1953, Hunter will also get star billing in Sailor of the King with Michael Rennie and Wendy Hiller. After a little over four years of marriage, on the 29th of March, 1955, Jeffrey Hunter and Barbara Rush will divorce. They had separated a few months earlier. Barbara will state that the reason was being apart so much, each working on different movies in different locations, even having to leave their two-year-old Christopher 
with his grandmother. The movie business is hard on families, she said. Barbara will marry twice more after divorcing Jeff and have another child, Claudia Cohen. Barbara will continue her film career and over the years become a major star. After his divorce from Barbara Rush, the next year in 1956, Jeffrey Hunter will get the biggest break of his career. He will play Martin Pauly, an adopted nephew of Ethan Edwards, played by John Wayne, who spends years looking for his niece Debbie, played by Natalie Wood, that had been kidnapped by the Comanches. The searchers will see me at Jeffrey Hunter as a major star. Also in 1956, Hunter will meet Joan Bartlett while on location filming A Kiss Before Dying. Joan was stunt writer for co-star Virginia Leith. Joan was a divorcee with a young son. But within a year, on 7 July 1957, Jeff and Joan will marry. Jeffrey will quickly adopt four-year-old Steel as his own son. Strangely enough, just as Jeff was marrying Joan, he was also starring in No Down Time with his ex-wife, Barbara Rush. Within two years of Jeff's marrying Dusty, as Joan was affectionately called, they will have a son on the 24th of March, 1959, Todd Hunter, who will become an actor and attorney at law later on in life. In 1960, Hunter will star in a true story as a real-life Mexican-American teenager that becomes an American hero during World War II. And on 8th of February, 1960, Jeffrey Hunter will receive a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame, located on the south side of 6900 block of Hollywood Boulevard. The next year, 1961, Jeff will have a major role in the epic film, King of Kings. He will be accused of being too young for his role, even though he was 33 at the time. Afraid of being typecast after King of Kings, Jeff will look for roles of shady characters. Two things will happen to him in 1962. He will appear in the epic film, the Longest Day, about the D-Day World War II invasion, with several prominent actors, including John Wayne. And next, Jeffrey and Dusty will be blessed with another son that they'll name Scott. The next year, in 1963, Jeffrey Hunter will sign a new contract with Warner Brothers, and they'll soon create a new Western series for NBC called Temple Houston. Jeffrey's co-star will be character actor and friend Jack Elam. The series will create 30 episodes, but it will close the next year in 1964. Jeff will be paid $5,000 per episode. In 1966, Jeffrey Hunter will be cast as Captain Christopher Pike of the USS Enterprise in the original Star Trek pilot. After the Star Trek pilot was picked up, naturally Hunter asked for more money. To everyone's surprise, the producers let everyone in the original cast go and hired William Shatner and a diversified cast to show that they can all get along in space. After Star Trek, his career took a downturn, and he was forced to go to Europe and Mexico to work on cheap westerns. One year later, after losing Star Trek, on 28th of February, 1967, Jeffrey Hunter and Joan Dusty Bartlett Hunter will divorce after almost 10 years of marriage. Joan will pass away on November the 28th, 2005, from lung cancer at the age of 76. On January the 4th, 1969, Jeff will meet Emily McLaughlin, who played Jessica Brewer on TV's General Hospital, 
at a cocktail party at the Beverly Hills Hotel. They'll leave the party together. One month later, on February the 4th, 1969, in Juarez, Mexico, they'll be married. Emily's son, Robert Lanson, Jr., from a previous marriage, will serve as best man. Shortly after their marriage, Jeff will travel to Spain to film Viva America, a film about the Chicago Mafia. He will sustain serious injuries when a controlled explosion went wrong. While sitting in an automobile, instead of the window blowing outward, it blowed inward, leaving Jeffrey with cuts, bruises, and a severe concussion. He was rushed to the local hospital. According to his wife, on their flight back to Los Angeles, Jeff went into a shock. He could not speak or barely move. After landing, he was rushed to the Good Samaritan Hospital in L.A. Doctors discovered a displaced vertebrae and a serious concussion. He was released after a few days with warnings to take it easy. On May the 26th, 1969, Jeffrey Hunter was at home in Van Nuys waiting for his wife Emily to return from her daily rehearsals. They had plans to go to dinner that night with Jack Elam and his wife to celebrate Jeff's signing to star in a band of brothers with Vince Edwards. When Jeffrey started down a four-step stairs from his living room to another room, he suffered a hemorrhage, falling and hitting his head, fracturing his skull. No one knows how long he lay there until the gardener spotted him on the floor through the glass window. Jeff was conscious when the gardener helped him to the couch and called Emily. When Emily arrived, Jeff was unconscious, and she called the fire department and they rushed him to the Valley Presbyterian Hospital. Surgery was performed to relieve pressure on the brain. The next morning at 9.30 on the 27th of May, 1969, 42-year-old Henry Herman McKinney's Jr., Jeffrey Hunter, passed away from intracarnal hemorrhage and skull fracture. He is buried at Glenhaven Memorial Park in Selmore, California. 